Picture this. The people of Israel have been defeated by the Babylonians. The temple in Jerusalem has been plundered. The monarchy has collapsed. The people have been sent into exile. God's covenant with Abraham is being called into question. This is the backdrop for the words that we hear today from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. These important words of comfort come at the very beginning of what scholars call Second Isaiah. The book of the prophet Isaiah is actually a very large book. It's divided into three sections. In the first part, Isaiah warns Israel that if they don't change their ways, a great punishment is coming. And this punishment comes at the hands of the Babylonians. In the second part of Isaiah, the prophet says to Jerusalem that you have served your term, your penalty is paid. And then the final part of Isaiah involves a return to Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the temple. But the passage that we focus on today comes from chapter 40. And it's structured kind of like, like the gathering of a heavenly council. The prophet is reporting, a new age is coming and we must prepare. A voice cries from the council, prepare the way of the Lord, make a straight path for God. Lift every valley, flatten every mountain, the uneven ground shall become level, the rough places become a plain. Then, then the glory of the God shall be revealed. The heavenly voice cries out, cry out, and Isaiah says, what, what shall I cry? The voice says, cry out that even though people are like grass, they wither and they die, the word of God stands forever. Isaiah says, be heralds of good tidings. The time of punishment is over. Let go of the gloom and doom. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Be a herald of good tidings. Say to the fallen cities of Judah, here is your God. And see, the Lord comes with strength, strength enough to level the mountains and fill the valleys, but also with tenderness. Tenderness like a shepherd gathering the lambs. God will come and embrace the people holding them close, leading them forward in safety. Well, this prophecy announces the coming of the Messiah, God's anointed one. And Isaiah says all you have to do is open your eyes to see God at work. God is both mighty enough to transform the landscape, and gentle enough to soothe a frightened child. Well, these important words of the Hebrew Scripture still speak to us today. If you are suffering, if you are thinking that life is over, if you have reached the end of your rope, God can be your comfort. God's promise is everlasting. God's love can even overcome death. So comfort. Oh, comfort my people. I'm so sorry that George wasn't able to sing this morning because he was the setup for this, right? Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. I can't sing the rest of it, though. That's all I've got. <laughs> George threw his back out this morning, and he wasn't able to come and sing. So we pray for George in a speedy recovery. 
Well, these words from 2nd Isaiah are all around us this time of year because you probably already know this, they are the very first words that we hear from Handel's Messiah. Comfort ye, oh comfort ye, my people. And we are hearing portions of the Messiah today, so we're reminded right away. And you know, while we associate Handel's Messiah with Advent and Christmas, that was not their creator's intent. Charles Jennings, a literary scholar, who was also editor of Shakespeare's plays, had an idea of writing a sacred oratorio that would be performed during Holy Week. Jennings is the one who compiled the scripture passages that come from throughout the Bible that became the libretto for this, this composition. He is the one that chose Isaiah to be the very first words that we hear. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Well, I recently read that Handel completed the musical score for Messiah in just 24 days. That's astounding to me. Apparently, he liked to work in kind of concentrated periods of time, rarely leaving his room, not even taking time to stop and eat. Well, Jennings, Handel's collaborator with this, got kind of annoyed with Handel and his composing method. He thought that he rushed the composition and should have taken greater care in the process. In a letter, Jennings wrote about Handel's composition that he has made a fine entertainment of it, though not near so good as he might and ought to have done. <laughs> have you ever worked with a collaborator like that? Well, this message of comfort is needed as much today as it ever was. Like for the people of California who are, whose lives are turned upside down now by the wildfires. Or the people of Puerto Rico and the Caribbean who are still recovering from the hurricanes. Or for immigrants and refugees who fear deportation every day. or for the many and many women that we are hearing about who have suffered because of sexual harassment and abuse, or the countless individuals and families who suffer because of opioid addiction, or the families of those who have been murdered right here in Baltimore. This message of comfort is needed just as much today as it ever was. But who will carry this message? Who will be the herald of good tidings? Who will do the work of peace building and reconciliation? Well, we are the ones who must do it. Christ has no hands or feet but ours, Teresa of Avila tells us. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he works to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Comfort my people, says your God. Be a herald of good tidings. In word and deed, show that God is still with us. This is the work of our Advent time. Make straight the path, feed the flock, embrace and comfort the suffering. This is how we prepare to receive God in our midst. Emmanuel. And this is good news that we hear from the prophet Isaiah, but you know, it is a word of hope, but it is also a word of challenge for us to act. We are the hands of Christ in the world. We are the feet that work for justice. 
This is our work to do. May God give us the passion and the will to do it. Amen.